Hello everybody, my name is Rodgon. I am an artist, a designer, and today we will be drawing together. So, let me uh, recap you guys on the things that I have been doing lately while you all join the stream. So, right now we have absolutely no one in the chat, but I'm pretty sure that'll change. So, in the last couple days, I have been focusing heavily on understanding different elements of the face. I have been very, very uh, meticulously trying to figure out the different points in which we learn and how to understand each point and how to navigate from one point to another. That has been, and then how to explain the levels of detail and how those apply to different jobs and how, you know, we apply these, you know, different elements and skill sets to different career paths. So, you know, there's different ways that you can be an artist. So... I have been uh, developing a little bit more of a lesson plan into that. I have also been developing the idea of drawing all the way up to the nose only and then drawing the rest of the face. That has been something that has been very uh, apparently like good. It has been incredibly good for me to be able to do that. Have you any advice how to start to make cartoonish drawing? Uh, yeah, uh, learn the very basics of uh, anatomy and perspective. Anatomy and perspective are an absolute key, even if it's not realistic stuff, right? So being able to draw cartoony still means that you should be able to still understand what you're drawing. So it doesn't mean that it's simplified. Like being simple doesn't mean that it's just uh, stylized. No, being simple means that you still understand what you're drawing, right? You're still understanding all the structures that are there. But now you're deciding to make it simple. So anything complex or, you know, difficult to draw has to have a basis on something simple, right? It's just a matter of if you want to go simple or if you want to go complex. Once you understand shapes, it's going to be incredibly easy for you to be able to map that out in any way that you want. You'll be able to create super simple shapes, a little bit more complex. You'll be able to map out every single feature, you know. So understand the basics of basic shapes and how to turn those into three-dimensional shapes. And then those three-dimensional shapes turn into objects. And that's where your imagination comes in. But learning all these elements of perspective help you understand all the other concepts that people explain, right? You're not going to be able to understand, for example, the idea of a turnaround or how something is rotated in space if you don't understand how something is a three-dimensional space, a three-dimensional shape. But yeah, that like leads you to be able to create a lot of really cool art. So the fundamentals are actually very important, but nobody ever really uh, puts any imp uh, importance or heavily uh, focus on that. So I try to change that by trying to like make it into fun little you know lessons for you. All right. So lately I have been working on my modules for Twenty One Draw. So I have a new lesson from Twenty One Draw that I'm going to be teaching animals. And I'm going to be teaching how to draw cute little mascots and sidekicks for all your stories. So I have been drawing red pandas lately. So I'm going to be drawing a couple animals. Uh, how long have I been on? I've been on for like five minutes, maybe. So as you guys are here on the chat, make sure to leave me a little like so that other people can get notified through... The beauty of TikTok. I'm going to take a sip of coffee while you guys uh, manage to do that right there. 21 Draw is an online uh, course, like, you know, it's like a school where some very prominent artists, like, in the industry get to teach, like, specific topics. So they reach out to us and then they, you know, ask us if we want to be part of it. And then, you know, it's a little bit of an endeavor, you know, because it's a lot of work. 
And it's not really all that much pay, but it's really, really gratifying to understand that my work is now going to be seen by every single person in the industry that, you know, has a say in it. All right. So pandas. So one, a few things that I have found about red pandas, right? So whenever I'm drawing anything from reference, I like to make sure that I have uh, blah, blah, like notes and everything because every little drawing that I do is going to teach me something different. For example, uh, all these were done from reference pictures. So I was able to notice a couple different things. Like the ears on a red panda are rounded and they have like a little butterfly thing. But it, this part right here is not necessarily part of the ear. It's just the little fluffs of tufts of hair. So I got to keep that in mind. The ears don't really stick out all that much. So it stays relatively close to the edge of the head. The hair flows backwards from the forehead, which is very interesting. So all my hair is going to be flowing from here, from this origin point. Okay? So every single time that I'm drawing fur, for example, in this one, I have it flowing forward. It would be flowing backwards. It would be flowing this way. Same thing with this one. Since that little detail provided me a little bit more so that I can create more motion in my little designs. The most minuscule thing, right? So then the body and arms are dark. So every single part of the body and the underside is going to be a lot darker than the top side. And I'm going to make the hands even darker still and the feet. So when you see red pandas, they actually have a very, very dark underbelly. So keeping that in mind is going to make me think of things like, okay, I need to make sure that this color doesn't just walk. I'm not going to take any of the lives. Um, this color can't overshadow my arms. It can't, it, otherwise, it's not going to create enough contrast. So I'm going to need to find a solution for that. Okay. When it comes down to like me drawing like a fully rendered illustration, I'm going to need to figure out a solution to like all the underside of the body being dark. And that's probably going to come with rim lighting. So creating just a little bit of a lighter tone at the edge. Like if the light was hitting that rim. And that's the sort of trick that people do with comic book lighting. With like Batman's cowl and like stuff like that. You end up having to do that because normally you have black and white or black and that's the only color you have if it's a certain type of comic. And then you have to make sure that you like accent things still with heavy contrast. Okay, so as we go down, I'm going to, you know, explain what I have learned so far about drawing little red pandas. Little red pandas are kind of like little potatoes. But we're going to draw it like a little beanbag because I have just come to love the beanbag shape for absolutely everything. Right, so we have our little beanbag shape. We're going to subdivide our beanbag shape because that's just the easiest way to understand where to put our features. So I like to divide it. If I'm going to do a three quarter view, I'm just going to divide and find the middle ground of my shape. Okay. So the shape is going to come out this way. The line goes right through the middle and I create a middle ground for my shape. Now the red pandas have a very wide and they have a face that kind of angles down like the curvature of the little poofs are downwards so i'm going to create that downward shape within my beanbag that's now that's the head now with having the head there 
I have a couple elements that I can uh, start including. I can start including the little element of the snout as just a basic shape, like the most basic, basic shape, just to start mapping it in there. Then I'm going to start mapping out the ears. The ears don't stick out too much. They are rounded and they have a little tuft creating a butterfly. Cool. They have a little black part inside. Perfect. Now we understand that the tuft of hair originates from this part. So whatever tufts of uh, hair are going to be directed in that direction because the hair flows from the forehead. The eyes are relatively small and they're pretty close to like the muzzle. So I'm going to draw my two little eyes really close to the muzzle. And the muzzle is like the nose right here. I might not know the actual term of what I'm saying, but uh, hopefully you guys understand. Okay. Then after that, we are going to go to the other side of the little tufts. We're going to come up with the sides of the face. So now we have the sides of the face. Our initial shapes have completed the first basic element of our character, right? So now we have something to start basing everything else off of. So once we have the face, we, under we can see in the drawings that the head is about a third of the size of the entire body. Cool. So this is the face. This measurement needs to be replicated three times over this shape. Now, that doesn't mean that I just divide everything in threes. What it could work, you could actually have overlapping shapes. So if you had the face shape, you could have the body, the little rest of this element right here. I'm gonna draw it a couple times so you guys understand. Okay, this little element of the beanbag could be like done several different ways. You could have overlapping shape right there. You could have it be with the front being more like, so it has like a belly, right? There's a bunch of different things that you can do within these little shapes by just changing the way that the line overlaps. So you can play around a lot with positioning Right? You can play a lot with positioning just based on this little tiny, loose, little like beanbag shape. Uh, let's do another one. Let's... So we could have something more kind of just like a flat, just normal, with his belly in the front. Like you can rotate the character completely around and figure out different ways to draw them by just simply creating the compression point at a different point. Um, let's have him completely turned around. So you only see his back. So you can change a little tiny compression point and it changes the look of the character completely. So you have a lot of liberty when it comes down to that. So for this one, let's keep it nice and simple. And we'll just give them a little bit of compression. So we have a straight and an angled side. Okay, that's normally what creates the best... Um, the best type of fluid motion, uh, a compression point and a stretchy point on any of your poses. So we're going to have that. Uh, one thing that I did notice as well is that their fur is kind of like a tree. So they have very tough fur. It seems like it's very, very, uh, you know, like thick. So to like weather the environment. So when it comes down to his little body, I'm going to make sure that his fur is nice and toughy. The nose is a little bit small. 
their mouth is relatively close to the front of their mouth. And then they'll have their little marks. Okay, so now we have a little cute little red panda that's just like chilling there like, yay! Now, the arms, they seem to be really, really like just little jelly beans as well. And the bottom legs kind of just blend into the actual body. They have relatively long fingers. But they don't have a thumb. So I'm not going to draw a thumb. Just going to draw like their little paw parts. Their skin is, you know, thick. So I'm going to draw the tufts relatively heavy. Like a tree, kind of. Going to add a little bit of those inside as well. And creating a little bit of a drop shadow for the head just so that it creates contrast. And we can see a little differentiation between the arm the rest of the body and the head, creating depth and contrast. Okay, so we have little feetsies, and then they have their tail. Their tail is roughly about the same size as their body. So just quick measurements gave me this like rough estimate. So if we kept that, but we wanted to make the tail go into the, the distance. I can just take this point, map it out in the back, and then that could be my focal point for my perspective grid. And then wherever I lay this down, it's going to be about the same distance. Or it's going to at least appear like. Ta -da. Let's see, let's add some color. The color patterns are, they're normally like a really dark red, like a scarlet. And then they have their white markings uh, on the side. The markings in their eyes tend to look a little bit darker because they have the same coloration as the body, which is really dark. But it gradually is fading back into the normal skin tone of their fur. So it creates this little tiny mask-like thing in the front. See, highlighter is very useful. It's like super versatile. If you know how to use it, if you like understand how to use it, it's such a good tool. Like it's such an underrated tool. Okay, so we have our little weed panda. Yay, hi. Okay, so now that we have this, we can actually start trying to figure out a more stylized way of drawing the character. So. Once we have the basic shapes, the basic persona, now I'm going to try to uh, stylize them more in a way that would be fun for like a t-shirt or for like a sticker. So I know that my character is going to be a beanbag. I'm going to stylize them so I might squish them even more. So my beanbag is going to be a little bit smaller. Okay. 
I'm going to have my head be a little bit bigger still. So I'm going, instead of being like a third, I'm going to be almost half, but not quite half. It's going to be the size of the ratio that I want. Because I just want it to be super cute and like super adorable. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I have to come up with something that's going to make it appealing. Just the animal itself is going to be cute, but how do we make that even more appealing? How do we make that even more stupidly cute? Okay, so normally I have two different ways that I like to create my really adorable characters. And that is either to combine them with something contrasting, like if they're really cute, what is contrasting to cute? Probably sexy or probably horror, like scary. So one of those two things combined with something really adorable, like a little red panda, is going to be like a winning combination. It's going to look appealing. It's going to look cool. Simply because of the contrast in concepts. And the concept of a contrast is not necessarily just for colors. It's for, you can use it for a lot of things. And it's uh, a concept that a lot of people just do not take advantage of. They don't learn a lot from like about it. And then, you know, it's just no, something that normally comes to us. You know, like we learn to uh, not put two colors together or we learn to not do certain things. Or this stands out and this looks really cool or, you know, and normally it's with color that we associate that with. But that has to. Do, that could be with line work. That could be with uh, everything. All right. So we have this. Um, let's see. What food is another thing that like makes characters look really, really cute? So I think that's what we're gonna do. We are going to have our little red panda. Since they're like uh, red or like brownish, we're going to make them into a cappuccino. Going to make them into a cup, which is going to establish a little bit more of like a perspective aspect to this. And I'm going to give it a handle. Okay. Let's uh, adjust the camera so you guys can see a little bit more. Wait, what? Uh, does the live start the same time every time? If so, uh, no, not at all. Uh, my lives do never start at the same time. Um, I wish that I was more consistent, but I'm not. But all these uh, end up on uh, YouTube uh, later on. So if you feel you know so inclined that you uh, like what you're hearing and what you're seeing, uh, you can probably find a couple, uh, hun- like 100 or 150 different videos in there right now with a bunch of cool, good information about ex- like stuff like this or more industry-related stuff. Like if you want to get a job, if you want to learn how to like get rid of art block, all that stuff. Okay, so let's. Uh, so we have our reference, and we have our, our dude. All right, so uh, let's see, what is he gonna be doing in here? Maybe he's gonna be chilling like a villain, and going like, "Hey, what's up, ladies? You wanna come in here?" Yeah. Why not? He's going to have his little hand right there. His other little hand is going to be maybe over his belly. His little tail is going to be coming out of the cup from the side and curving around. Again, he's supposed to be about as tall as him. So I'm just going to make it nice and poofy and a little bit long. Okay. Let's zoom out. At this point, 
I can start generating a little bit of depth by creating shadows of the shapes that are going to be there. I don't connect this shadow right here so it looks like it's going at a distance and creating a little bit of height difference right here. The stronger the shadow, it means that the object is closer to the ground. So right here, it would mean that this object is relatively close. And over here, since you can't see it anymore, it would give you the illusion that it's not going close to the ground anymore. Oh, uh, this is a red panda. It's going to be red panda. Mostly because it's a red panda page. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't mind doing it. As a... Uh, what did you see? A raccoon? No... And see, I draw with pen, and you see all these sketchy lines, right? Like you, and you would assume, like, oh my god, how are you gonna like me? Make it look good. But again, this is the concept of contrast all over again. By the time that we're done with this drawing, you're going to see that most of these lines are not gonna even really matter anymore because I'm creating darker lines. And I'm creating a more of a focal point outside of those sketchy lines. So therefore, it's going to generate like a better visual. Uh, like it's going to look cleaner. The darker elements I put, the more light, the lighter elements are going to look. And the more contrast I put, when I put color in here, it's going to make a lot of those lines just look like they're not even there. We're going to add a little bit of ripples to make it look like he is in some sort of liquid. The lip of the coffee mug would have a little bit of a thickness to it. and a little bit of height before you go into your liquid. The liquid will also have any highlights that would be hitting from the scene. Water is very reflective, so, or liquids are very reflective. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to the side of the cup. Uh, try to keep this as close to a nice, even perspective as possible. Obviously, I'm just drawing and doodling, so I'm not overly concerned with creating a grid and like doing all that stuff with every drawing. But, you know, it's good to just have a good understanding and try to aim you know, for a good line, even if it's not necessarily, like, taking you, like, 20 minutes to set it up. You know, it's good to just, like, keep an eye and be like, hey, all right, this one's looking pretty good today. Uh, I got it down. Okay, cool, that one's closer today. Maybe I, I don't have to, like, you know, refine it so much next time. And little by little, you just get used to creating uh, better lines and just get better. But you have to be aware of that stuff. You know, you have to, like, be aware that you need to uh, improve, that you need to pay attention to the details that you're drawing instead of just, you know, going at it and not worrying about anything that you're doing. Like, every time that you put your uh, hand on the sketchbook, it should be because you're learning something, right? And every time that you get off your sketchbook, it should be because you learned a little bit. Now you have to time, uh, now you got to, like, process it like now now you got to practice it now you got to like you know understand it and if you don't do that with your drawings and the lessons that you learn and the classes that you take like if you're in college or in school for this and you're not doing that and you're not going and taking an extra hour or an hour or two after school to be able to practice what you just learned to cement it in your brain you're just going to forget about it. You're going to forget about it in a week. And you're just going to struggle again. 
So we all learn the same way. We, we learn through repetition and we learn through muscle memory, right? Some people are just better at it than others. But, and some people just uh, require more than practice than the others. So don't do yourself a disservice and actually go to your classes and actually pay attention. The one thing that I noticed a lot when I was in art school back in like 2002 was the fact that that was the case. Like nobody ever wanted to actually put in work. Everybody thought that it was just an easy like, ooh, I get to go to art school. Oh, that's easy. I'm a creative person. Oh, I can do everything. Everybody else can. My parents have always taught me that I'm the best. Well, that's cool. But you know what? Everybody in that school thought that. Every single person in that school gets told that same validation. That's why you're trying to go and make a living with that, right? So having that validation is great. But understanding the concept of you having to work your ass off for the rest of your life to be able to achieve the level of awesomeness that you require to leave a legacy in this field is nuts, right? So that's why so many people fail. So many people drop out. So many people stop. So many people give up. It's because it's they think it's going to be easy just because they're creative. You don't need to just be creative. You need to be creative and you need to be consistent. And you need to be able to teach yourself and you need to be able to advance without having or requiring the aid of other people, right? You need to have a lot of like very, very good like management skills to be able to be an artist by yourself. Like if you want to be a freelance artist and you want to do it for yourself, you're going to need a whole new level of unlike, you know, time management and like understanding about finances and contracts and legal work. Like it's it's not an easy career to get into. And you know, it's another reason why so many people fail at it. Because they think it's going to be just a creative field. It's not. It's creative, it's money management, it's uh like understanding markets and, you know, like it's understanding what's popular and what you can achieve and the limitations of your skill sets and how do you overcome those limitations? When do you micromanage? When do you have to like let go and like, you know, delegate? Like it's so many things that go into just doing your own shit that, you know, a lot of people also give up on that because it's not easy. And for God, it, like God said, it's not easy, like at all. Having to be creative on demand is one of the hardest things that I know, like, I, I needed. Like, understanding that the deadlines, deadlines don't care that you're not feeling happy today. Deadlines don't care if you're moody or you're on your period, or you're on your man period, because, you know, guys have, like, a moody part of the month. You know, it's, it doesn't matter. Deadlines are deadlines, and they're not going to wait for you, right? So if you're a professional, it just comes, like, it, it it's going to come to you at the point where you're going to be, like, overwhelmed at one point or another, and you're going to be like, sure, what did I get myself into? And that's just, it happens to everyone. And it's the people that stay in there, even after that, the people that understand that all those are growing pains, right? You you having to understand what you're doing and what you're going through and like the market that you're into and that, you know, it takes time to get there. Those people are the ones that are going to make it in the art world. Those are the people that are not going to be phased by, you know, 
criticism or critiques and they're going to take that shit with stride and be able to get better because now at least with criticism they know what's wrong right someone telling them that their art is eh, it's not gonna make them go oh my god i hate the artwork it's gonna be like oh thank you dude i didn't know i missed that in my artwork i appreciate you Those are the people that like, reach out to me, and I understand that those people will succeed. Because it takes a different level of, uh, of mental, uh, not fortitude or confidence, but more like it's, a, it's a, the mental state of knowing that you have a lot, a lot to go. Like you have the humility to understand that you're growing. That that alone is going to get you a lot of places. Do you post the lives anywhere so we can rewatch them? Yes, uh, I post them over on my YouTube. So you guys can feel free to uh, watch them over on YouTube. And it's the same name. It's Rodgon the Artist. <laughs> this art is stolen. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Stolen from where? <laughs> ah, man. People are funny. Uh, no, my art is not stolen. My art is all me. I normally draw it live. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to contest that, but... Okay, let's see. Uh, little tiny eyes. <laughs> By 0 to 10, how good do you rate yourself as an artist? Okay. Let, let me explain to you something. I think, I personally think, I'm a fantastic artist. I think I'm great. I'm really, really good. But you know what I also know? I also know that there's a lot of space for me to grow. So regardless of me thinking that I'm a good artist, which I am, because I am a confident artist in my skill set, uh, I understand perfectly well that I am well below where I could be. So I work every single day, and I draw every single day in order to get there. I'm not trying to compete with other people. I don't measure myself up against anyone else. Like, my progress is strictly my own. And my hardships, again, are also just strictly my own. I don't, nobody else is going to come, uh, you know, like, tell me to go study so that I can get better. No one else is. No one is going to uh, mother me into, like, doing things like uh, practicing anatomy and, uh, you know, uh, doing my perspective work whenever I can. So that I can get better at my drawings. No one's going to do that for me. No one. No one's going to do that for you either. Because everybody just assumes that if you're a decent artist, you already know that stuff. But the thing is, most of us don't. Most of us don't take the time to learn that stuff. Right? Nobody, like, even I, like, 10, 15 years into my career... I had to go back and I had to go back and reevaluate like why are my art why is my art not flowing like I need to right I got stuck for a while and I was like oh it's because I'm not doing the basics and then once I started studying again it everything just started clicking and I had such a huge incremental spontaneous like growth like that it was just insane and I loved it And then I get to share it with all of you, right? Uh, I have trouble with anatomy. Could you give me some tips on that? There's a bunch. Yeah, I, I have a ridiculous amount of tips for anatomy in my YouTube channel. Entire videos, entire hour-long videos 
just dedicated to different parts of the body. Like if you want to learn how to drop like better, uh, I'm not saying I'm like the ultimate like say all say all about anatomy at all by any means. But if you want to learn and you find the way that I teach a little bit uh, good, then just go just check out my channel. Like you'll learn how to be a complete like artist like from start to finish. Like having no experience, you can go on my channel and learn how to like start making money with that shit. Is it true the hardest body part to draw is the hand? Uh, no. No, the hand is actually relatively easy. Uh, the hand is like a potato chip. Right? If you think about the hand in this shape, it becomes a lot easier. Because everything else just becomes... Like, second, you don't have to worry about the shape of the hand... The shape of the hand is literally a potato chip. <laughs> uh, I've done multiple videos about how to draw the hands and stuff like that as well, though. So if you do want to learn how to draw that, go to my YouTube. There's lots of videos. Uh, there's lots of videos, a lot of little tricks that you can learn. So uh, Let's see. What should we put on the mug? Uh, raid is number one. Because, you know, red pandas never get the recognition. So this little guy believes that red pandas are. Okay, so we have that. Now let's add a little bit of contrast with our highlighter. And you guys remember those sketchy lines that we were so worried about? Where, where are they? Where are they? Can you guys still see them? The, the concept of contrast is a huge concept to learn if you want to learn how to sketch better. Okay? These are not finished pieces of art. Like, what I'm doing is literally just sketching. This is what I would just normally sketch if I went to the zoo and I was, like, looking at a little animal and I would, like, this is what I would be doodling. Like, I wouldn't be doodling like this. I would just really quickly understand the shape and then I would start trying to go into more uh, imaginative things. Highlighter. And it's not a special highlighter. This could be done with any highlighter. I just prefer this one because it's like kind of like a little like a peach tone. So it's a uh, kind of like you can get away with like a skin tone ish. But that's the only reason that I use this one. It's not necessarily because of the brand. The brand does not make it like the the oh this is the highlighter to use. No, like at all. Uh, I personally really like super dry highlighters. Like, the drier, like, that point, like, in between, like, super dry and then, like, dead. Oh, that's, like, the sweet spot. That's definitely the sweet spot with highlighters because then you can use them for, like, blending. You can literally, like, feather them and, like, grate them. And it's, a. Uh, I used to love drawing in highlighters because that's what I used to have access to in my office. Right when I was uh, working at a nine to five, I had free, free highlighters and free pens. So what did I do? I just started drawing with highlighter and pen because they were free. Why not? Creating a background shape is going to accentuate the elements that are white. See. Right there, the ear doesn't stand out. The ear pops out like a sore thumb. 
also with the, the whipped cream that I put on the top of his head. If I don't have an element that's creating contrast, it just wouldn't stand out as a feature. So again, contrast. Yeah, let's just bring this all the way up. There you go. The darker the element next to the light side is going to make the darker darker and the lighter lighter. Right? What books do you recommend? Uh, for what? For drawing animals? Or for, like, just learning in general. This place is full of weebs. <laughs> hey, those are my people. Leave them alone. I will draw you in, like, a weird, like, anime position, dude. Like, don't even tempt me. I will avenge my weebies. This are my weeb peeps. You'll never get rid of it. Uh, learning in general, what books do you recommend? Uh, there's The Silver Way, which is uh, Sil Stephen Silver's uh, book about how to learn how to give characters uh, flow and life and all that stuff. And that's just a general good book to be able to learn from if you have no concept of cartooning. Essentially, it teaches you the entire process and like how you should be thinking. Uh, I, I highly I recommend that. I also highly recommend uh, taking his little academy uh, classes. Uh, Keshart on Instagram is not a book, but he's a really, really good explainer. He has a lot of good videos as well. So you can probably check him out and you know learn a few things from him as well. Um, Michael Hampton's book of anatomy is probably my favorite anatomy book so far. And it's because he has a lot of... Uh, color and he has a lot of uh like elements that he marks with um uh, like color distinctions and it actually uh helped me out a lot to be able to see things like that drawing once again and let you speak woman uh okay so we're gonna draw a couple more red pandas let me take a little sip of coffee because uh. so how are you guys doing today Oh, man. Oh, man. So, I have a planner now. I got this because I have wanted to actually keep a tracking planner for the longest time. Uh, why? Do you say, I am in love with schedule keeping, but I never am able to keep one. I never am able to plan my life because I'm dumb and I don't really think ahead when it comes down to, you know, things I do. Even though I work better with planning. Uh, don't you all understand? What? What is this guy going? Uh, hi, I'm in Indianapolis. I, don't, I need no one to survive. I can just kick you out, buddy. No, I don't need no one. Rod is self-sufficient. All I need is peanut butter and fish sticks. <laughs> no, I'm not a gay fish. <laughs> All right. So in this case, I'm going to draw a little bit more of a stylized character. Even more so. I'm going to just try to make a character with the characteristics of a red panda, but change it as I feel like it to make it look a little bit more me. Okay, so we're going to start with a jelly bean again. At this point, I want the tail to be the main point of balance, so I'm going to create my tail first. That's going to be the biggest element, and therefore it's going to ground my character. Boom, semantically in there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw whatever he is going to be holding. In this case, I want him to be holding like a plush doll. 
I don't know what the plush doll is going to be yet, but he's going to be holding a little plush doll. So I'm going to create the little shape for the plush doll and whatever the arm for the plush doll is going to be. Okay. So boop, 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 boop. the next step is to come to the conclusion of what elements of the character do I want to keep. So I'm going to keep the ears and the markings. That's going to be the biggest factors that I keep from this. Okay. I'm not necessarily going to follow the shape of the head like this, but I'm going to keep the same elements that I know are going to keep the character looking like a red panda. All right. So we're going to have the ears a little bit round with the little tufts. We got to determine the midpoint of our character. So I'm going to make the midpoint right there. Because if I trace this line from the front and through the back of my shape, that'll lead to where my tail is. Right, so that's providing me already a lot of depth right there. If my ear is going to be right there, the other ear is going to be around here. Then I got to determine how I want this character to be holding this. Because if I start drawing the head and everything else, and I forget how to make the character holding the thing that he's holding, then it's just going to look weird. You know, I'm just going to kind of like face, you know, the fact that I'm going to have to like overlap things that I might not want to. <laughs> so I like to work from the front back. And what do I mean by that? If I was looking at this through a camera, <coughs> right, if I had a camera and I was looking at this character, what would be the first things that would hit the camera's view? And I work my way back from there. So in this case, it would be the doll. So the doll is set first. Then the next thing that would happen, it would be the arms or whatever are holding the doll. Because that would overlap whatever the face is. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start kicking people out. Uh, it seems like you guys are fighting... So let's um, let's just block people. Boom, done. All right, anyone else? There you go. All right, so now that we have that, we have the element of the Christmas tree uh, type of like fur as well. So I'm going to have my little dude holding his little doll. Like this. Right? One arm is going to go underneath the doll and come up a key around, and one of them is going to be over the doll, holding it from that side. The little feetsies, since he's just floating in air, his little feetsies are going to be literally just. Little nubbies. <clears throat> and he's going to be wiggling. Yeah, I, I don't like people arguing and fighting in my streams. Uh, I don't know how to set up mods. Like, honestly, sorry, I just have not been doing streaming for very long. So I don't really have much of a, like knowledge about all that stuff yet so you know and i don't really have people that are willing to do that for me yet so um at one point it'll happen but i just don't even know how to do that on tiktok so i do apologize for anybody just being a jerk and like being dumb okay so after this we have our body we have our thighs we have our little legs right We have our path down to our tail. We can create a little bit of a drop shadow now because we know that the element is supposed to be there. 
Now we got to come up with what look we want for the little doll. So I want him to have a little normal panda as a little doll. And the little panda is going to have a hat. So his little arm is going to be black. But we can't make it black because otherwise it's going to not stand out against his body. Remember, his body is supposed to be a darker color. So we got to figure out the solution for that. Be it that be the, we choose a different color for the red panda or for the little doll. Or we figure out some other solution, but it can't be left to to not knowing what we're going to do, right? We got to always think ahead and know what the next step is so that we can actually stay ahead of our designs and not like end up having to redo things at the end because, you know, we didn't realize that an element wouldn't stand out or an element wouldn't be able to be seen. That's really, uh, honestly, that's what differentiates a person that has experience illustrating towards a person that doesn't. The person that has experience illustrating will realize these things and be able to uh, make changes as they go, therefore taking a lot less time to achieve the same thing. Uh, a beginner will honestly go back and forth a quadrillion times just to get to this point. Okay, then we have our ears. We already drew our ear with our little tuft. And then the next step is to figure out what we're going to be doing with the face and the facial expression. So I want him to be smooshing his face against the panda. So he's going to be smooshing his face. Which means that if the compression point of something squishing this way... Like, something's going to be pressing against his skin. Therefore, it's going to compress everything and move everything back. Therefore, his cheek is going to be right here. And since his cheek is going to be right here, we can make the other cheek come all the way up here. Okay. Since the cheek is getting pushed in, one of the eyes would be just really like squished in against the cheek. The other one, not so much. The markings are going to be kind of like eyebrows. So I'm going to just take advantage of that and I'm going to create eyebrows with them. Cool. Now the next marking is around the eye and is a little dagger that goes around the face. The cheek is hitting right there, so therefore you wouldn't see that part. And then we just finish off with the cheek. I like to draw the edge of the mouth first because that's the cheek line into the rest of the face. What's missing? The hair, remember, it's like a Christmas tree. So we got to replicate that for the rest of the drawing. Nice and tough, coarse. The little lines in his um, tail and stuff like that would also be coarse like that. They wouldn't be straight, they'd be coarse.
and a little bit of drop shadow for the face and little tiny drop shadows and contrast points for the rest of the character. just so things stand out. The hair, remember it flows from, from the forehead backwards, but I wanna stylize it a little bit more, so I'm gonna create some big tufts, because he's gonna have like, anime protagonist there. Your zigzags, your whenever you're drawing zigzags for fur, draw them with the direction of your fur in mind. Okay? It's going to make your characters look like they have life. Drop shadow again for the face a little bit, just so it stands out more. And now it's time for a little bit of contrast. So we grab our highlighter and then we're just gonna start with our first layer, which is applied nice and quick. Uh, highlighter is a, not a very forgiving medium. So if you don't lay down your first layer really quickly, the next time you go overlapping it is going to make it considerably darker. So you have to work quickly when it comes down to highlighter. Uh, it kind of gives you like a very uh, uneven texture sometimes. And I kind of like that too, though. Because it kind of gives me like a feel like a watercolor. Like it's not completely even, but it's not completely like, you know, bad at the same time. Okay, so that's layer one. Highlighter layer two is about just adding the darker elements inside. Just a little bit darker inside the belly. a little bit darker where I need points of contrast. And then to make the white stand out, what did we learn? We create color contrast so that the white stands out as well in your sketches. Ta-da! I hate it when it smudges and ruins the drawing. It's such a big struggle for me with highlighters. Highlighters don't smudge, though. Like, highlighters, I, I mean, this is not necessarily from this uh, Stabilo thing. Like, it's not just because this brand is bad, but most highlighters dry really quickly, so I don't know why they would be smudging. Um, the only reason that highlighters smudge is if you're using alcohol-based pens. And let me see if I can find one. If you use alcohol markers or alcohol-based pens, here you go. Uh, no, it's watercolor, water-based. Um, see, you have like the felt-tip pens, right? Like these. These work really nice with watercolor too. And they don't smudge. But there's some pens that will smudge, see? Some of them do smudge. And I think this one's not, this one's alcohol based. Yeah, so that's what happens when you draw with uh, certain types of pens. But when it comes down to the ballpoint pen, a normal big pen will never smudge. It's the pen that you're using. Don't use a gel pen. Just use a normal ballpoint pen and it won't smudge. 
Like you can draw over a million times and you won't uh you won't sponge. Uh what pens do I use other than a big pen? Uh, I normally only use big pens because I really like the way that they lay down the colors. I used to do it a lot in blue. But the blue ones are, in my opinion, the best ink that you can sketch with. It just doesn't stand out as much. So it doesn't have like the umph, you know, that the other, like the black does. But it's it lays down better inking and like better lines. And they don't smudge at all, ever. So I love drawing with the blue Blue big pens. These are my favorite. I also like drawing with these multi-pen tool thingies. Whenever I find one that has a bunch of them, I normally drain them completely. Like, I just go through them like crazy. <laughs> like, I have to refill them with other ink cartridges so that I have, like, extra pens with me. So those are the pens that I normally draw with. And I honestly just draw with random highlighters, random markers that I find at thrift shops, random crap that I find for cheap. Uh, I don't necessarily spend a ton of money on uh, art supplies because, you know, the type of sketching that I do, the type of art that I create, isn't necessarily, uh, doesn't require that level of detail doesn't require uh, super heavy, expensive quality markers and utensils. It's more like I'm just teaching the basics. And I'm teaching you how to teach yourself, right? I'm explaining to you the secrets of how to understand objects and shapes so that you can go ahead and teach yourself, you know, your style. Like, this is not a style. I don't teach a style. I teach processes that will teach you the way that you can implement your style. If that makes any sense. All right. So we are getting close to the end. And since we drew a lot of cute animals today, we're going to draw one more. And as the last sketch of the day, I always allow you guys to decide what type of drink our little animal is going to be with. Uh, I don't necessarily have a style. I have it more. It's like animation, cartooning. And a little bit of editorial cartooning. So think of Calvin and Hobbes meets animation. And that's kind of more of like my style than a soda. All right. So we're going to have a little red panda holding a soda. Okay. So we have our little jelly bean. And our little jelly bean is going to be holding a soda. So the soda and cups and stuff like that are normally warped because I like the idea of uh, super exaggerating the, the shapes. Uh, he's going to have a can, but he's going to have a straw that goes into the little hole. Okay, that's going to be where his mouth is. So that's going to determine our muzzle. Then from there, uh, I want this one to be a little happier. So I'm going to have his ears a little bit higher than the other one. Uh, his head would still curl down. I'm going to give him a bigger forehead because he has to be cute. Uh, what kind of sketchbook is this? This one is a Danique sketchbook. Danique. These are amazing sketchbooks. I love these guys. Um, they hold watercolor amazing, and they hold a lot of different inks. The only thing that they don't really work with well is with uh, Sharpies or alcohol-based markers because they bleed a little bit. But if you don't work with alcohol-based markers, these are amazing books. They're so good. And they look pretty as hell, too. Like, they have super cool designs. You can put your own designs on them as well. Okay, his cheek is going to be going in. His little nose. His little eyes. 
the midsection of his face so I can map out my eyes better. He's also going to be really happy, so his little eyebrow thingies are going to be really high up. And he's going to be slurping, so his cheeks are going to be poofed up. They sell them at Target, or they used to sell them at Target for a while. Uh, but they have their own website, and if you contact them and you tell them that Rodgon sent you, they might give you like a 15% discount. Uh, they love me there. <laughs> uh, I might make an Inktober list. I might. Uh, not sure yet. Mostly because uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to participate much. Uh I'm working heavily on finishing my course for 21 Draw, and that's taking a little bit more time than I wish. Uh, I wanted to have it done by October, and it's just, you know what, it, it, it turned out into being like a, a pet project more so. So I put a lot more effort than I probably should have for another people's course, Uh and it's honestly one of the best classes that I have ever, ever done. Like the way I have shown it to like 10 people and all those 10 people were like, holy shit, dude, like you found it. You found, you found it. Like that's your, your thing. You found it. So um, I'm very excited to, uh, to have that go out so that I can see the feedback that I might get from it. Good or bad, I, to me, it's, uh, it's all a useful information. Right? But me, for me, good feedback and bad feedback both provide me with very good information to be able to, you know, make my artwork better. Oh, uh, it ended up being a cup because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> and then his little tail is going to be wrapping around. We use the little the perspective points to create an element of depth. Overlapping lines create depth from, you know, nothing. So use them. And now we have a lead red panda with his Coke. Yay! Okay, let's give him his little cheeky marks. And add a little bit thicker line for the straw. All right, that came out really cute. Let's add some contrast so that he really, really shines. <gasps> no, we do the cheeks. I'm going to have to cover that with white. Let's see if I can find the white marker right now. Off. Have inside, then inside. No, it just goes that. That there you go. Okay. There you go. And then the darker parts, we just go in again with the highlighter. And then. Just a little bit of contrast. You can make little leaves. You can make it look like bamboo. You can make it look like background if you want. You know? The possibilities are limitless. You can literally just create background elements that are blurry and fuzzy. Like, it doesn't have to stand out. It doesn't have to be super detailed as long as it's just different focus. 
But there you go, guys. Have a wonderful day. I can't find a white marker for the life of me right now. So I'm going to have to skip adding the white to that section, unfortunately. But have a wonderful day, everybody. Uh, I hope that you all learned a little bit. I hope you all had a fun time drawing red pandas with me. If you did draw alongside with me, uh, make sure to tag me on Instagram if you guys do post anything. The tag name is Rodgon the Artist, and I love seeing what you guys do while you guys draw with me, and I will normally share my stories if you guys do tag me in your stories. So, because it makes it easy, I can just reshare it. So, make sure to draw along with me. If you guys did not get all the stream you guys can always go on youtube maybe about an hour from now and i'm going to have it there ready for you guys to be able to watch okay have a wonderful day i love you all thank you all for joining in thank you all for liking the video um the stream if you do that tiktok likes me and they like me more whenever you guys like it more so if you guys just want to do that that'd be great go follow me on youtube so i can get to that hundred thousand uh follower a little plaque. If I can get that plaque, that is a life goal. That is literally a, a life goal. So if you guys can just go follow me there, that'd be so helpful. And you guys get a lot of good information too. So, you know, it's good for both of you guys. All right. Uh, so can you show all the red pandas so I can redraw them? Sure. There you go. You enjoy the little red chubby pandas. Okay, it's a wonder what a little bit of reference can do for your art. Uh, so have a wonderful day. Make sure to spend a little bit of time to improve your art today. And by the time you know it, before you know it, you guys will be even better than I am. Okay, love you all. Take care. Catch you guys in the next one.